Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert and we're continuing our video series on the new features in Pro Tools 12.3. In an earlier video, I showed you how Drag to Commit worked with MIDI and showed you various workflows and why various things worked the way they did. And one of the things we were going to get, move on to was using virtual instruments with a separate output workflow. So that's what I've got here. I've got an instance of Superior Drummer here uh, playing on this top track here. And then within Superior Drummer, I've got it bust out to different outputs. And then they're coming back into different channels here in Pro Tools. And they're coming into Auxiliary Returns. So that's what they're coming into. So when I play it now, there's my kick, snare, toms, overheads coming in. I've also got my snare drum coming through that verb as well. It's, it's an instance of Ocean Way. So that's coming in as well. So a couple of workflows I want to tell you about. So if I wanted to get the separate outputs of everything I'm hearing now, I wanted to get that all down on two separate tracks, I'd simply select the top track, I'd press Shift to select the bottom track, so all of these are marked white, then right mouse click and go Commit and then it would give me this dialog box. And commit selected tracks, which is what we've got. Uh, consolidate clips, which is what I want to do, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So all of that is going to be done and consolidated at the same time, so it's not going to treat those as four separate clips. I could actually untick that, then that would come across as four separate clips at the end of this. So that's a possibility straight away. Uh, then we have render automation, if there's any automation or pan there, but I'm going to stay on consolidated clips. Then we have copy sends and group assignments, and that's possible as well. I'm going to untick that for now and show you why in a minute. Uh, and then it says insert after the last selected track. So basically when it's done all its rendering, they're all going to appear down here at the bottom of the display. Now what I can also do as well is select uh, hide and make inactive or make inactive. So I'm going to choose hide and make inactive for now. And then tick offline, and when I press OK, off it goes and renders away. Now, depending on the complexity of what you've got, I've got a pull tick EQ on there, I've got a couple of filter bank instant instances on there as well. So, depending on the complexity of the stuff you're trying to render from your separate outputs, then that will take longer or shorter. Uh, this is a track of uh, what, one uh, point, uh, just about one minute 20. Uh, 2.9 times. Now again, it depends on the complexity and that bar doesn't move at the same pace all the time. So there we go, we're done. It's done it. So it's going through a little bit of a background task going on. It creates my audio and as you see now, I've got audio versions and all the MIDI stuff and all the separate inputs that were coming in here before have gone and they are now hidden. Let me play you this. So there's the main drums, then the kick, and there's the toms, and there's the overheads, and there's the verb. Now the first thing you might want to ask me is why are some longer than others? They're all kind of, is this a bug? It's not a bug. It's quite a clever system that they must have worked out when they were designing the system. Because what it's done basically is it's listening for when silence appears and then it will end the clip. So if we, for example, take these overheads and we push them right up, we can see here that the silence runs out, keeps running out. And basically till it gets to nothing. So that's a really smart move. So it's not clipping any of the tails on things like toms or uh, reverbs or symbols and stuff. So that's a really nice touch uh, by Avid on that. So that's how that works. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to come back to the pre state that we had it in before we did any rendering and it's going to take a second or two and there we are. 
that's magic for a start. I've completely undone all that we just did, which is really nice. So it's undone all the rendering, and it's undone everything we did, and we're back to where we were before we rendered it, so we can return to that state, which is nice. Now what I want to show you this time is a slightly different way of doing this. So I actually rendered the audio of the reverb before, but if I didn't want to, I'm going to press uh, Shift there to there. Now this time when I commit, I'm going to hit Commit here, but this time I'm going to say, copy the sends, and when it copies the sends this time, again, it's going through everything it went through before, it's not including the ocean wave reverb that we had on the snare drum before in the rendering. Instead what it's doing is it's taking this send here, and it will actually insert that send in its current state now into the snare drum. So now the audio version of that snare drum now has a send placed in it in exactly the same position as it was when it was a auxiliary return. And now it's coming back still, the verbs remained. And now... So I still have a live version of the reverb, so I have my options to do that. So again, I'm going to undo all of that again and return it back to where we were. So that's creating stems from separate outputs from a virtual instrument. Now, you can do all sorts of other stuff as well. If, for example, I had a the Ocean Way reverb up on the entire kit up here, and let's pop that on there, I'm just moving it up there for now. So I've now got the whole of that superior drummer going through the Ocean Way there, and let's just solo that. You can hear that happening. Now what I can do as well is if I right mouse click, instead of right mouse clicking on the name here, I right mouse click on the input here, I can commit up to different points. So if I don't want to actually have the ocean way included, I commit to there. If I do, then I commit to there. So if I commit that now, it's going to include the any plugin up to that point. Same here, if there was, as I say, an instrument here with that EQ1P, that, that pull tech from UAD, I could commit to that or, or keep it out of the equation altogether. So it's quite nice that you can do that kind of stuff. So that is rendering separate outputs from a virtual instrument by using the commit feature within Pro Tools 12.3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.